Greg, thank you very much for coming. Greg is a, a very good friend and also president of the Appalachian uh, Media Group, uh, who does some marketing for some of my businesses. And the reason he's here today is because he's uh, he's a, kind of a philosopher, and I, I take a lot of what Greg says is uh, very very important to the work that I'm doing. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna get to know Greg today. And I already told him there will be no softballs, even though we know each other pretty well. Uh, if you see Marley, Marley's on the floor, so Marley's uh, Greg's dog, so if you see him in and out of the picture, that's perfectly fine. Uh, he's very quiet, so he probably won't interject anything. And Greg talks a lot, so Greg will, Greg will probably fill up most of the air as I ask very pointed questions. Okay, so the first thing I want to know is, tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, how old are you now? 50. Okay, so what was, what's was what been the path? Can you give us some of the, the key events that happened to you to get you to the Greg Aldrich that I know at 50? Wow. Um, let's see. Uh, in, in public schools as a child, I was singled out and picked on by authority figures. Oh wow! Okay. Um, so that were you good? Were you a good student, or why were you picked on? I was a fine student. Um, I just, I, I just don't fit well into conformity. Okay. And so, so you, you, it doesn't matter if you challenge them. Is it safe not, to say? It's not, or? it's not so much challenging. It's just I was existing on either on the periphery or outside what they wanted the norm to be. So I got gotcha. you. The way. Uh, the way public education is done, those people have to be beaten into, mm -hmm. you know, into submission. Right. right. Uh, it wasn't that I was doing anything wrong. I wasn't. I wasn't criminal. Right. Um, I wasn't a disturbance. I was. You know. I wasn't actually committing. Uh, committing what would have been. You know. Yeah. Um, they, you rule didn't, they didn't send you to the principal every other day. That oh no! I got. Thing. I Just... got sent. I got sent to the principal a lot. But it wasn't that I'd done anything. Right. It was, I was in the vicinity of something been done. I gotcha. It was, you know. It and because was, you were on the fringe, they said, oh, Greg, I'm Greg the, probably did it. I'm probably so the gonna, Trump, yeah, so we'll, we'll, we'll snare him into this. And, right. Because obviously he must have something That's to do with whatever it is. That's very interesting, considering some of the other things that we'll talk about. So, the so authority and being on the fringe of, of whatever they're trying to call normal mm -hmm. in, in a classroom. Interesting. Um, so, yeah, it, it wasn't me doing anything to anybody. It was just not not being able to conform to their to their right. liking to to mm -hmm. you know to the mold yep. they were trying to mold everybody into. Yep. That's that's how that's how public mm -hmm. education works. So um, so I come by my my experience and distrust of 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 governing authority honestly. I right. Mean, that's been my experience right. my entire my entire right. life. Now, um, did I, you just real quick at that age? Did you see that this could be an advantage for you and start to become a rebel because it, it defined you in some way? No, or did I, you just kind of just kind of walked into this and realize, just, oh my gosh, I'm in this place? Yeah, it just happened. It constantly happened, and I hated it. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, it started when I was probably 12 and went all the way through high right. school. Now, did you hate it because you felt less than the other kids? No, I hate it because hate I felt because... persecuted. Okay, got it. Unnecessarily. Got it. The entire experience was a useless one f for any purpose right. other than unless you just enjoy uh, enjoy harassing kids. Right. That's why I think some of the ones that don't fit into that very narrow uh roadway with with the barriers on both sides i think some of them like that you know mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden they're outside the barriers and then they become a problem for the rest of their life because for some reason they enjoy being outside of that mainframe or they're trying to push the envelope yeah I, now I, I don't i don't recall at any time trying to uh trying to use that use as a way to do again. any of that stuff i really just wanted to be you know, left alone to right. to enjoy and do whatever, and you know, right. I don't want to cause people trouble. I didn't want me being caused trouble. I thought, right. you know, uh, peace and tranquility is right. really should be the natural the natural order of right. things. Um, now, were you you were a good student though? I mean, you got good grades, or did that become a problem at the? I mean, my grades weren't great, and that's because I, I didn't like being there. Yeah. Uh, the, the, yeah. the distraction of being of of the the. Yeah. Of the abuse, mm -hmm. um, made school you know made 
the entire school situation one that I wasn't going to spend a lot of time and effort on other right. than what it took just to get to the other side of it because the because I had I, I developed a uh, uh, a dislike for for the for the entire thing so it just right. became um, you know marking time right meeting whatever meeting whatever requirements are, are are required so I can get out and go off and do something else I, I mean at the time I thought if I if I get to the other side of this, well, then every, everything will be fine. Unfortunately... So you thought this was isolated just to the school system? Oh, yeah. That if you um, if you became an adult or got out of high school or whatever, all of a sudden you'd be in the real world and that would be more open to you. And it would make, and it would make more and, sense. Yeah. You know, things would make would be more rational. And right. Would, you know. Right. Um, unfortunately, that's that's not the case. The, my experience in, in school uh, is exactly the same as then my experience in college. My right. experience in the work world, my experience in right. this is just the way the way people were interacting in in mm -hmm. government schools um, at the time towards me and towards each other and the things I observed and experienced are never changed. It just the venue changed, right? You know, the date changed, right? But the but the behavior of people was the same no matter where right. I went. Um, now was it was it a significant moment when you when you graduated from high school and went to college? Or, or was that just another another phase of? Did you complete your college? Did you get a degree? Mm -hmm. Okay, so was that the same as high school? He said, "Gosh, this is the same thing. I just have to get through it." Or did you well, they, did you maximize whatever limited freedom you had? Uh, I mean, what was what was the college experience? My I mean, college like, experience wasn't as bad in in that in that particular sense than than middle school and, and high school. Um, with you know, with the exception of, of of the material being a lot of propaganda, oftentimes yeah. um, there's really there are really very few rules. You know? Right. So it, it didn't matter. Well, if it doesn't want, it doesn't matter if you're there. It doesn't yeah, matter if you're on yeah. time. And if you wanted to do independent study, you had the library. You could go off oh, on sure. your own, and you could do whatever yeah. you want to do outside of your normal classes. Um, for the most part, the the persecution, the specific that specific type of persecution, the personal persecution, which I I received all through uh, other schooling, mostly went away. Yeah. I I ran. It still ran into some of it in in mm -hmm. various places and with and with certain people. But it was the, the the volume of it was dramatically reduced in college. Right. So that was. Did, were you excited about going to the college? Yeah. I mean, you, you, so oh, yeah. you were a learner. You wanted to you wanted to go to college to do what? To figure out the world, or I mean, what? what why did you go to college? Initially, I was going because uh, I wanted to fly jets for the Navy. Really? Oh, um, I didn't know that. And so I took the ASVAP. I was working with a recruiter. Um, and did you have to have a four-year degree to go to go? Yeah, I was taking planes, I was or? taking mechanical engineering. That's okay. why I went into college to take. And you would have um, came out like an officer or something. Right, I was going. I would have been... gone to officer training school and been, right. on, a, and been on a track to to do that. Um, now, was your dad in the navy? Is that no? No. no how, did, was, how did you find? How did you even get? Like that every idea? other teenage boy in the eighties, it was because of the movie Top Gun. Top Gun. Yeah. We all yeah. wanted to go fly jets and shoot right. down Russians because right. you know and right. land and on get women and get women. Yeah. So, uh, I I took it further than so than how first. so how far did you get along with that dream and and what stopped it? Uh, the first semester you're not a, you're not a naval no, pilot the, right now. The so first semester we'll let everybody know that Greg is not a is not Tom Cruise. I have desperately tried to get a pilot's license privately. Well, you and I will do that together because that's one, that's on my bucket list. Oh, cool! I, and and, and um, own a little plane. I would love I would love that. Hopefully, you know. Click the sub subscribe button and send a lot of money, and we'll go. We'll go get plane. plane well, I found out that plane. that I was too tall to fly the planes I wanted to fly. Really? Um, that, I mean, they they designed Were these, like, these fighters. Yeah, yeah. Then yeah. no. they design these. Yeah. To fit a specific, you know, so wow, you got to be. Know in, that. You know, it's everything. Everything is done statistically. So, you know, they 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 right. want to make them. They, they want to they want to reduce weight. For, for and, and right. size for a number of reasons in in a, right. in, in, in a in a fighter plane and so to make sure you don't reduce the pool of, of potential pilots you need to keep it big enough to get the largest percentage of possible people in the pool right but you've got to some people are not going to yeah. make it right. I was in the fringe off and they had, the, right. my, my issue there was is that nobody told me that the recruiter the entire recruiting process was obfuscating that particular piece of information yeah. because I tested so well 
Um, they wanted you. They, they wanted just me didn't want to do anything. Do, I just couldn't, couldn't do that. Right. But they didn't care. They just knew I was somebody they wanted. And right. that probably works for them most of the time. Yeah. I imagine most of the time people get ensnared, they find themselves in it, and yeah. then and then they realize, you know, I, I, I'm going to be doing this instead of that, and that's right. not what I wanted, and they go right. up and complain about it. I found out in advance, and then just... It's like, well, if I'm, if I'm not doing so this, so that changed that changed your dream as going going to college. I mean, you still went to college. Oh yeah, but you changed you changed to some other discipline, obviously. Yep, I switched to the College of Business at the University of Tennessee and was going to in finance. And when I decided I was going to be a banker and just make money. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So what what was the next most significant thing that kind of defines the fifty year old Greg Aldridge? Wow. Um, so college, you got through college, you graduated. Well, I, it's still co it's, it's still in college because you know you have a lot of different yeah. things going okay. on. I mean, and there there was the academic part of that, and me, you know, working my way through finding an academic track to actually finish. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, a lot goes a lot goes on in college. Um, so you know, you meet friends, you find other interests. Mm -hmm. I, I ended up doing a whole lot of things I never knew I was was going to do. Um, and that defined, if if not my occupation to today, largely what I did for for the decade through through the nineties. Um, the most significant part of that, I think, though, in college was probably being taught that there was no God. That was something I didn't find, wow. I didn't find that out until I went to college. Now, were you a believer mm -hmm. prior to that? Did you go to Did you go to church with family or I mean, my how, parents, how deep was my parents took us sporadically? My grandmother and my, my both of my grandmothers were devout, right? And so I went with them more than I ever went with my parents. Gotcha. Um, but you were a believer when you went when you graduated from high school and went to yeah. Went and, I, to and, I, and I think I was probably a believer in the sense that most kids are. It's yeah. all you know. Yeah. So you yeah, don't you, you don't have, have a grounding yeah. to to uh, you know to solidify that. Right. It's just you're raised that way, so you are that right. until you either decide you're something different or something happens right. to change it. And what happened to change it for me was you know going to college. Right. Um, and. You know, the notion of of God in a in a uh, in regular academia is laughable, and even the people yeah. even the people in academia who are believers, they don't talk about it. Right? They it's just that you don't get in discussions because you're outnumbered. Yeah, you, basically, you, yeah. Um, they push you out of the group, yeah. or they they ignore you, or whatever. Um, the I guess the you know the if I had to pick a defining moment of that, and what really what really helped me. What really led to me believing that there was no God, besides the fact that was the propaganda that you so you did party. come to believe it. Oh yeah, you kind prepared, of, yeah, absolutely with, prepared with the everybody time. there and all the pressure and everything else. You 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 came out believing that there was no God. Um, yeah, and and what what made that what made that possible um, was there was a particular day. It was my probably my second semester of college, and I had uh, that semester I was taking a, a uh, philosophy class. It was knowledge and reality. You, know, you study you study Nagel and Descartes and, and Socrates and and, and um, all the people you told me to go read and you, sh right. and you should yeah um, and my class after that was a uh, math class I was taking an analytic geometry class and uh, in philosophy class that day we were studying Descartes and going through the, the treaties of, of Descartes from the foundation which is you can't claim to know anything nobody knows mm. anything and here's why and it was quite sensible um, and logical, the mm -hmm. you know the arguments sense, there. And I thought, yeah. okay, I, I, I get that. So, you know, that in and of itself um, is still just philosophy. But that particular day, uh, in in our analytic geometry class, we learned that parallel lines meet. Yeah, you were t you were telling me this the other day. <laughs> okay, so explain. And so yeah, because. That, that's just you learn in the, geometry in high school the definition of parallel right. is equal distance from each other in and they never meet they never in, meet in both directions in yes. analytic geometry you learn they do meet um, and there's a formula for it at explaining how it is they meet now they don't physically meet now you said something about perspective is this the railroad tracks that exactly. appear to meet okay so and there's so and they don't the reality is the railroad tracks don't meet but when you're talking about perspective and you said mm, there's you know, a formula yeah there, i mean you you there's actually there's actually an equation 
So then, so you out. can draw them so that they look like they meet, right? Is that is that the reason the equation exists? It's, it's, well, I, the equation exists to be a mathematical explanation of what you're observing. Okay, all right, and okay. and so got it. After you can't claim to know anything, and I thought I knew parallel lines didn't meet, and now right. I find out they do meet, and here's the equation for it. I was like, wow. But they meet uh, in a two, they meet in a two dimensional. But at that time, did you get to the point where you said no parallel lines are still parallel lines and they never meet? Um, well, that's that's that's, that's the reality, where, that's right? That's where can we agree on that though? That parallel lines never meet, except in a two in a two dimensional way of thinking about it. No, or, they or, never or they two, never meet. If, they never represent? they never meet if no other if no other element is entered into it. So if it's just those two lines that right. are not being observed by a third party, then they are equal to Perfect. Oh, I love that. Okay, so um, by, see, that's why you're so good. You're able to simplify things like that. So if it's the third party observer right, by me observing, that creates the exactly because I'll never see them as parallel forever because they're always going to they're always going to verge to a exactly. point. So they're going to they're going to cross or. And, or Come come together. Mm -hmm. So okay. you combine that. Wow. You combine that with the philosophy that I was right. learning, and then the the whole postmodern idea that we were in then that that uh, that whatever whatever you can get people to believe is what's actually real. You know, you put all these things together, right. and that's and that's a you know that's a uh, a a perfect God obviously doesn't exist concoction. Right. Um. So that was the beginning of college. By the end of college, did you did you when you first heard it? Did you struggle with that, or did you just kind of buy it, like I think everybody else does? Because you're an extremely thoughtful, and you and you think way levels deep. Is, is this you bought it just because you were young? And well, I didn't bought it because there was it? an equation, and when I did the equation, it worked. So obviously, it's true. The math works. Right. And. I, at that point, I didn't question numbers or math, so right. that was the that gotcha. was considered to be the evidence to, right. to an 18 year old me. Right, and that's not irrational. That's completely but rational. But you took a lot of philosophy courses. I mean, as that's you went years, through, as you went through philosophy. the philosophy courses, did they add to the belief that there was no God and that and that the postmodern idea of you know we whatever I can get you to believe is true. Uh, did, no. did it add to it, or did you get to the point where you go, "Oh wow, you know, this is not this is not the right road"? No, philosophy actually did the opposite. The 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 study of philosophy and my deep interest in in exploring it actually uh, brought back the idea that it's very possible there is a god. Okay. And, I'm so glad you said that. And, not the god part, but that philosophy. If people understand philosophy and they're trained correctly, they'll be able to. Uh, better understand today's world. Yeah, and would, and would that be a fair statement to say? Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. Um, That's they may be. not understand today's world, but it, at least you're able to quantify or qualify what's going on around you and why. And question through, through and question when it doesn't seem. Right. Well, and that's the, and that's the beauty. That's, we're going to get into that right now. Things don't seem right to people. Right. Everybody's kind of sitting there going, "God, really? Is that is that the truth?" And they're struggling with that whole. I think on both sides, but okay, good. So I'm glad. I'm glad philosophy helped you sort this out. Yeah, so I we, can't say that I necessarily graduated a believer again, but I, I guess uh, to apply a term, I graduated agnostic. Yeah. So I no longer so don't believe there was not questioning. Now, okay, there can be. I don't know if there is yet. Right. But obviously, I, they're, what they're telling me isn't right. It's right. not obvious. There's not a God. There very well can be. Right. I just don't know. Did you think that through through the the um, the way that you were the courses that you were taking? So you were taking some business courses. You took math. You took philosophy. Mm -hmm. You probably took some sociology or something like that. I took that. a lot of psychology too. Psychology. I have thought I wanted to, wanted to actually switch and be and, and get a, a medical degree and be and be a psychiatrist. Right. To go into right. go into the to field. Go I, therapy. I, that I kind of thoroughly stuff. enjoyed the psychology classes. Right. Um, I never ended up doing that because it it, it 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 wasn't what it wasn't what uh, was the catalyst to the things I started to get involved in. It was just right. kind of a desire that never never yeah. came to fruition. Well, you do that now. Yeah, when you what, talk to me. Yeah. <laughs> but what it did do um, is it gave me a it gave me a uh, an academic um, factual learned base to. To be able to understand and evaluate human behavior, right, in right. in 
off in all right. facets. Right. Um, so having having liked it, I paid attention. Right. Um, I was you know I was quite involved in researching and understanding it, and you know I never became a psychiatrist. But, but you have an I, amazing understanding see, of human nature. Right. I think it helps dramatically in in figuring out what people are up to and, and right. why. Right. Well, in figuring yourself out too. You know, the philosophy and, and the psychology mm -hmm. gets you to understand why are you thinking the thoughts you're thinking and should you even be paying attention to them. So, mm -hmm. I mean, that whole that whole self-analysis, which you do, um, uh, we all do. Uh, okay, so the, the question I had about the philosophy and the sociology and everything, do you think that there's a an underlying concerted effort to get people to think a certain way, an indoctrination process, in in the academy, in the colleges and universities. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So so you think there's an underlying it's reason there, why though. they're doing that? We live in a we live in a in a in a culture that does that at every level. It's not reserved just for academia. Right. Our entire culture is based around trying to manipulate people into group thought. Right. What's acceptable group thought, mm -hmm. um, and we educate students for, in public schools that way. Right. If you go on to higher learning, with the exception of maybe a few colleges mm -hmm. that are that exist on the fringe or outside right. the norm, um, that's what you're going to experience in, right. in on college campuses. Um, it's what you're going to experience in in the entertainment world. It's what you're going to experience in the business world. It's do you what, think it's, that's it's human everywhere. nature? Or do you think people <clears throat> actually sat down, you know, in in some weird conspiracy kind of way, and saying, "Okay, we have an academy here. What are we gonna What are we gonna train people in? Because what do we want them to look like right. when they leave? It's both, or is it? Okay, it's both. So not you, everybody involved in this is an active participant in the conspiracy, right? If you want to call it a conspiracy, there are some people who have grandiose desires of what where they want to see society get to, mm -hmm. and. Uh, they use whatever power and authority they have in the society they're in right. to manipulate things that way. Now you don't, but you don't have to bring everybody right. in on it. Right. You just need them to do like a steering their committee. part. Yeah. And and generally, this is how people behave and act. So you really don't have to let them in on it. You just right. have to guide. You just have to create the system yeah. Yeah. to allow people to do what they're naturally going to do, and you'll get what we have. Right. That's how it doesn't take much manipulation. Right. Well, when, um, when we started hearing about this postmodern world, word, and, and I really didn't know anything about it probably until five or six years ago, I started reading some of those philosophers, and I, I got the impression as I was reading that they were creating a system to create an outcome. They weren't, they weren't trying to hunt for the truth. They were trying to create a body of knowledge that they could give to a lot of young people, impressionable young people, to get them to think a certain way. And that mm -hmm. was and that was the first time I ever even saw philosophy about that. And 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 I, I got a really bad taste in my mouth for philosophy because it almost seemed like they were doing it incorrectly. They weren't searching for the truth. They were trying to create whatever they wanted the truth well, to be. Well they think in the they future. found the truth. Do you really think they did that or, or do you think that they did it with an ulterior motive of creating a different society well it's both they think they found the truth and their mission is to figure out a way to transmit that truth to others because right. if they get this truth too right. and we all do then we'll right get they to this, become the searing we'll committee get to this and we better, all go we'll get to this that. better world so so but, do you believe that they honestly believe that or or that they were trying to find a truth that was going to get us where we are today well you 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 use you use a lot of what they created and wrote and, 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 and communicated to us as a mechanism to find truth. So, um, you know, if you pick a philosopher, um, uh, we'll go back to Descartes, because, uh, you know, his, his universal truth is you can't claim to know anything. Mm -hmm. Well, that's actually true. I mean, you, there's, 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 no, there's no rational or logical way to, to, to break that down because the, 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 the arguments of why you can't know, know anything in absolute terms mm -hmm. um, is ironclad. The question is then where, where do you, where yeah. do you go from there? For some, for some people, it becomes, it becomes a debilitating piece of knowledge right. that they don't know how to handle. Right. They don't know how to fit not knowing in, in, into the world. They don't know how to make decisions based on, on that. It, it can be absolutely debilitating. For mm -hmm. others, it becomes a foundation for making 
better and more rational decisions because you, you start to understand there's things you don't know. Knowing what you don't know is very helpful mm -hmm. when, when trying to decide on the things that you, that you do know. Um, so it, it can go both. But that's a philosophical, I, I, I can't know anything. To there's certain things that I know and you know that we can agree upon. Well, we're both in this room together v filming this video and we're at my house. Well, according so, to Descartes, we don't know that. Okay. Because, because we could be being fooled. We could be dreaming this. Oh, I could okay. be dreaming I'm okay. being interviewed. Okay. Because when you're dreaming, right. for right. the most part, um, and for most people, they're very real. It's yeah. not until you wake up, you go, oh. Yeah. Sometimes you'll be in a dream and you become conscious of the yeah. dream. See, I don't that, dream. That so whenever people talk about dreams, I don't dream so, at yeah. all. I, well, I, and I, if, if you had... I dream, but I don't remember the dream, so that they're, they right. don't exist in my mind. Um, if... If, if you had if you had what's probably the more common experience with dreams then that that's what you'd see is that right is that um, for for a suspended period yeah, of time yeah, yeah. they're indiscernible from reality right um, well and people believe that there are certain uh, uh, philosophers and physicists that believe that this is all a hologram anyway you know that, well, that and that's, that's you know a, so that's but but that you're going back to your point of whether don't... that's helpful or not in in my walk through life, that's not helpful I think, to, to say I know nothing. I think it's more helpful in in um, it's more helpful in in knowing the difference between knowing something and believing something. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. That's that's what it it really. Most people go through life thinking everything they think they know they know. Right. When actually most of what they think they know they believe. They right. don't know it. Right. And taking, you know, this, this philosophy taken to the extreme is debilitating. What's the point if you don't know, right? Right. Um, that's why you have to apply some common sense to this and understand this is really, this is really just um, a, a thought tool to help me understand what do I know, what do I, what do I believe. Right. Um, some things you just know are actually true. Right. I mean, some things you just believe are actually true. You know them. Right. You, don't, you can't know that you know them. Right. But they are correct. Right. Um, See, and that's what makes you so darn frustrating to people at times, me included, because you have a depth of knowledge about this stuff where, where before you say something, in fact, you can even see when you're formulating a sentence, you're trying to figure out what's the most accurate word to use to, to mm -hmm. express my ideas, where a lot of people just say, I know it, it's true. And, and you're sitting there going, no, you believe it. Yeah. It's true, but it's not really true. It's not objectively true. It's we could have a whole bunch of discussions about everything that we see in the news media today. You know, we had one earlier today. You know, that's that's the that's, most common one. Is that? But nobody nobody gets to that level. You no, know, very very no. few people. And I've are, tried really really hard to engage people in who are like you know you take the the news story of the day that somebody that everybody's all angry about. You know, I look at it and go, okay, well here's what they're telling us. Right. I didn't see it, didn't experience right. it. I have no first-hand knowledge. So the best I can do is believe or disbelieve that it's being communicated to me right. accurately. But right. I can't know it. Right. Most people don't view... And even the person that's writing it has the same problem. They don't you write... Know, they're, they, they're, they're writing down a quote from somebody, but they don't know whether the quote is true. Well, and not. most of the, All they know is the person who said it is the person that I quoted true. in the article. I mean, they, I mean and even, with, even if you take news down to a local level, for the most part, the people writing writing and, and communicating that news to you they weren't they weren't the observer or the witness to right. whatever it is either right um it's so like the accident that happens and you have a person on each of the four intersections and you go and interview all mm -hmm. four people and you're going to get four different stories because you have four different perspectives now if you understand this is why this is why knowing what you don't know is important because if you understand that then you know that they don't know either right and you then you can then you can apply a little bit of science, a little bit of common sense right. to everything you're being told, and you can come up with what you can believe to be right. is actually what happened. A better a better approximation of whatever happened. Right. Right. Um, but most people view the news; they're told a story, and because it was given to them by the news, um, it's absolutely true. Right. So if it's something that upsets them or or is negative about a particular person, right? And they believe this to be what it is. Th you know, then they start justifying reactions and behaviors to this right. because because 
the news told them this is this is what's true. Right. In many of those cases, it's absolutely not true. Right. Um, and and so when I engage people that are that are on that track, what I'm trying to get them to understand is you didn't see it. Mm-hmm. You don't have a you have no you have no firsthand observation or connection to what it is. So you don't right. this thing you're talking about. They should be thrown in jail. They should be murdered. They should be hung. Whatever it is, right. you're angry, and then you want restitution for this person. You don't actually know right. that it's true and that they deserve it. You believe it's true, and you think they deserve it because you believe it's true. But you really should back up before you before you start right. you know start setting up or guillotines. Doing my comment on Facebook, yeah, um, and <laughs> without thinking about it, and consider is it is it actually true? Yeah. What's what? To what degree is it possible? We're so true? far away from that now. That's going to be frustrating. Human beings. Here's the, here's the thing. Human beings have always been. Right. This is not. This is right. not new. It has always been a very small segment of society who can step away from that normal dynamic right. and see it taking place, and and not be controlled by it. Right. The average person. That's 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 their reality. That's right. and that's and that's basically how postmodernism. Is really most accurately most accurately defined in, right. in in the real world. That's what's that's what's going on. So so is this a hundred percent? This is a terrible question, but is it a hundred percent human nature that this was bound to happen anyway, or is this being manipulated by the people who are running technology platforms and the 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 thought leaders of our society? And just talk about the United States now because we can take this. But I mean, is this is this was this destined to happen and the technology is just driving it quicker or do you think this is this is back to the question i had about college is this a is this are there people who are using this for their own benefit either politically or economically or is this just human nature it's both okay so plenty of people recognize exactly what i'm describing here and they see it as a way to benefit themselves so okay. the fact that you can lie to people and and about and and get them to believe a certain right. proposition as fact gives you power. Right. There and and it's very human. It's a very human thing for for some people to crave that power and want to use it for their own personal gain. Right. So so this is the vehicle for them to get and that, that's human. That. So right. that's just as that's just as much a, a part of the yeah. natural okay. course of human right. beings as the people who don't do that but are caught up that right. are caught up in it. Um, for the most part, where we are is where we were going to get. This is this is how people right. how people interact, behave, and carry and carry okay. and carry. And we'll get and we'll get a little bit into the. I didn't I didn't say that you were a former political consultant, but that's where a lot of this stuff kind of rubber hit the road for you as far as as political candidates and what they're saying and how to get votes and all and, you know marketing themselves and all that kind of stuff. But let's go back to. Uh, were there any other so so this this college was very interesting to me about about I went in as a believer I came out as an agnostic but in the middle I did I was an atheist mm-hmm. so that that's kind of interesting were there any other things in college or shortly after that kind of set the stage for for some of your beliefs about about liberty and freedom and the way the political system was set up you you have a tremendous interest uh, and knowledge about US history where did that come from? Did you did you get that in college? Um, um, a lot of the history that was taught in college was incorrect. Okay, that was it, that was my next it question. Was, it was, was it was what is considered to be the group think yeah. today of of our history. Right. Um, and I started to get in, in in the first Western civilizations class I took. I started to get the the feeling. There's, there's more here. Yeah. You know, I learned uh, I, that was when I first. It was in that class where I first learned that that even our study of history is is flawed, um, and up to interpretation. And so I decided, okay, I'm going to have to go to the library and find out. Right. Is what I'm being told true? Are there? Are, is it not true? Is this? Is, are there more than one version of, of right. any of these things? Right. Um, so from that point on, that that was what really started me studying history from myself, not by having other people tell me or teach me. Right. I went through all the history classes I would took. I got right. good grades in all of them. I did, the, you know, I did the work. Um, it's just you thought there was something missing, and you wanted to see. I did. You and wanted I, to see how did they get to that conclusion? And what I with, what uh, I discovered in in myself in my self uh, education was that a lot of what I was taught about history was false. Right. Um, or 
it's one person's opinion about it right. at best. Right. Um, and everybody believed it because this one person said it, and they may have, may have hit status or whatever. Well, in, in a lot of cases, it's it's with with history. It's it's what you think about history is going to is going to uh, affect what decisions you make. Mm -hmm. So if you've got a populace of people and you need to get them from point A to point B, but what they've been taught about a particular thing of history that's related to this actually takes them to point C, well, you got to change history right. so that it's easier to get them to point B instead of point C. Right. Um, now, most people, and I didn't think this at the time, back then I thought, okay, when somebody's lying to people or telling them stuff that isn't true, they know it. They, they're purposefully yeah, they're manipulating people. Right. What I discovered over the next 30 years um, was most people actually think what they're doing is is good, true, honest, correct. Right. They don't actually. They are most people are not. Per most people engaged in telling people things that aren't true. They themselves don't actually believe it's not true. Right. They think they're telling somebody right. the truth. Um, or they're doing good, when, and that's, the, when the result turns out to mm -hmm. not be good. They still believe that they were doing good. Right, because you never right. The other the other very human trait is is to never want to be wrong. It takes it takes for the average person it takes a lot to move them right. from a from a personal belief that they think is a fact that they are emotionally vested in, and in, right. they're more emotionally vested in than they are intellectually invested mm -hmm. in it. Mm -hmm. um, for my experience with people is is that people try to find an intellectual argument to satisfy what is an emotional belief so that right. way they can they know it's true because they found yeah, they, they found some they fact can reason they through fact, it right. but, some, but really it's a belief based in emotion not in right. fact you only went down the intellectual road far enough to figure out how to use that to support your, yeah. your emotions. And, to, and to argue with the people on the other side yeah. to say, okay, I have an intellectual argument that mm -hmm. usually isn't very deep, but there is some intellectual argument there. Mm -hmm. And I, the only thing I would add is that the emotional, the, um, the emotional belief about it, uh, or emotional belief, uh, I think tends to tie people together in in so social contracts. So that means that if we all if we all believe the same thing. The fact that we're all together and we're drinking at a bar or something is really, really important, which even locks in that emotional belief to a to a greater extent. Mm -hmm. If it's just me believing something, it doesn't matter. It's just that it draws you and I together, and I don't want to break that social that social bond right. between us because, you know, I don't want to go and say, "Hey, guess what, guys? I found out that there is a God," and then all of a sudden these people go, "Okay, that's fine. We'll go find somebody else to drink with." You know, or whatever. So there's a social, there's a social aspect. Yes, it is. It is a an innate trait of human beings to want to belong to groups. Right. Right. Um, and so a lot of what a lot of the decisions people make and the actions they take subconsciously are rooted in not being on the outside. Right. Uh, it, and whatever I have to believe to yeah. stay. Now in some the people group, are very active. Some people are very proactive in that they they have a fear of being on the outside it's not just something that mm -hmm. happens by default because it's the human way right they actually are they, they live in abject fear of not being accepted of not being a part right. of the group and they will make what are conscious not subconscious decisions conscious decisions to control that to, to believe to be a part to do right. whatever to be a part of the group right. there's a small percentage of people that are that are that are like that too but I think mm -hmm. my experience tells me for the most part the average person does it without knowing they're they're yeah, doing it. Right, right, um, right. Okay, so when you get to you get out of college, and you've got this history. Was your was your history uh, exploration mainly about the United States, or did, do you have knowledge of you know World War II and all the other the other you know? Oh yeah, I, I mean I, I studied history back to. Back to the original philosophers, Aristotle and Socrates. Okay, so I mean, what did what did the they? Greek, that's thousands. Of years. Okay, so when you got out of college, what was the job that you were going to get? Uh, it, I, I wanted. Mean, to, well, know? I switched from business to the College of Communications as I decided I wanted to work in radio and television, um, and I went to work at the campus radio station. Oh, okay. Um, and that is that experience. The last two years of school um, was what actually put me on the path to pretty much do all the stuff that that I ended up doing. Um, I, I got an internship that turned into a that turned into a part time job at a local station. I was you know I was doing morning drive on our campus station right. um, for years and was was very immersed in in 
broadcasting. Um, I was doing stuff on television. Um, and that's what I, th actually, that's what I thought I would be doing, that I right. would get a job at a radio station, you know, I would eventually be a, be a program director or a station manager, or mm -hmm. maybe go buy stations of my own, right. you know. Right, um, What happened, I mean, I, and, I, and I did work in, work in radio mm -hmm. when I got out of college part-time. Um, I worked, in, and my other part-time job was in an art gallery. And I did um, restorations. Didn't know that. I did restorations and framing on on um, uh, on artwork. For, oh wow! For for, for, um, for a guy that in an art gallery. Yeah. Um, I I lost my broadcasting job because of of governmental quotas. Yeah. So tell that story because I think that's kind of significant of the, where you're sitting right now. This, the station I was working at um, uh, had it was coming up for license renewal. And uh, one of the things that looks good on a license renewal for the FCC is diversity hiring. They were very proactive in... in and that can affect their license, right? So they do this yearly thing. You see this thing that says, if you want to see our licensing application, you can come to the station and that kind of thing. And it's not that every can, year. Yeah. But, um, but that can affect their license. Sure. Licensure, if, right? If, so, if, if a claim is made that they're being racist... Um, by another owner who wants to steal a station from them when it comes up right. to renewal, they may be able to make a case and they look at us. We hire women and minorities. We're right. a part of the community. They don't have a single black person working at that station. They're right. a bunch of racists. I should get that license. Right. So it. And does that happen, or is that just? Oh yeah, yeah. And, so, and, I mean, and they and and stations live in fear of of violating of not the being of not being renewed on things like that. So they check the boxes and they follow and they do things by the numbers mm -hmm. yep. so that so that the so that the government entity that is in control of their industry doesn't doesn't do something to them. Take their license, right. fine them, whatever it is. Right. You know, they're trying to man, they're they're changing their behavior to conform right. so that so that they can maintain yeah. maintain business. Um, the uh, and there were plenty of females working there. Our production director at the station was female. I loved her. Um, we had a couple on-air talent. There were, there were probably more women working at the mm -hmm. station than men. Right. Um, uh, when it came right down to it. Uh, but the only minority was uh, a black gentleman that was the station engineer, um, who was a super cool guy. I hated when he left because I became friends with him. He was he was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. um, I met him because I was complaining one day that I needed uh, my turntable had broken. And he, he overheard me and he said, bring it into the station tomorrow and I'll, I'll fix it for you. And I said, well, what do you want me to do for you? And he said, well, buy me, buy me a six pack of Dos Equis. Right. So I went to the grocery store, got a six pack of Dos Equis right. in my turntable and came to the station the next day. I'm like, <laughs> here it. you go. Yeah. Uh, and he fixed it. I still have that turntable yeah. today. Um, and uh, that's how we first started to become friends. Right. Um, he got a job. That was when um, that was when the, the internet was still new. They were still laying fiber optic. They were still building out an internet. This is mm -hmm. the early '80s, um, and what they had discovered, what the railroads had discovered, is they already owned the right of ways from one end of this country oh, to the yeah. other. Oh yeah. That, was, that are the perfect place to lay the fiber optics right. because you don't have right. to get any new permits. Right. You don't have to buy any new land. Right. You can all run the easements are already oh, done. Oh, it's all and done. They Just... became became the hot. The yeah. hot commodity yeah. in in building out the internet because of the railways they'd already built, um, and the rail uh, the railroad offered him a job paying almost twice as much money with a whole lot more benefits to go be an engineer for them. Um, to not figure a, out not how a train, to manage all not a train engineer. Yeah, um, yeah, but uh, to deal with the to deal with all the stuff he probably yeah he, he probably do dealt with, with the it. functional stuff. He probably right. managed a team of people who are physically doing right. the work. Right. Um, so he left. Well, that was the only minority working at the station, and this is the the this is the year of the license renewal. So um, with with him leaving, and I was in line to become full time. I've been a part time. I've been dependable. Uh, you know. Now, I'm, were you a talent at that point? Were yeah, I was working. Air, I was so working on air, and I was doing production work. Okay. Um, and, uh, there was another guy who also worked part-time who was, uh, who, uh, was the only other station minority. He was a full-timer. So that kind of doesn't count mm -hmm. for in, in the grand scheme of things. He was a part-timer. Now I liked him too. He was a super nice guy and a lot of fun. Um, but he was constantly, you know, if, if he was, if he was the, my shift relief, he was up next. I was constantly getting phone calls saying, uh, I'm going to be a little bit late. Can you, I'm, can you stay another hour? Yeah, okay. yeah. He was wholly undependable. Right. Um, but because they needed, 
they needed to put a full time minority. So on you the had books. two part times, you and the black guy. There were and, four or five part time yeah, people. Yeah, and they um, needed to put somebody in that slot. They so promoted they could him check to full the box on the license exactly. app application. So they promoted him to full time. Were you were you uh, last one in? I mean, was there a situation? No, I've been there no? longer. I've been there longer than him too. Okay. I don't, but I don't believe in the sonority thing. Right. I believe you get well, jobs. Well, that's the way co corporate does it, you know. And I'll tell the story about about my time with Allstate right. and human resources. But that's that would be the that would be the default position. Oh, yeah. You got to go. Sorry, because you came in last. Right. You know. So um, so they even violated that. Right. Um, which that wasn't my issue. Uh, my issue wasn't that they didn't have the authority to decide who they were going right. to promote. It wasn't that I'd been there longer. Right. It was it, none of that was. You it went was, several layers down. It which was that was... they made a decision because a governing entity was manipulating them into it. Right. That that required uh, that that had them promoting somebody who who was not doing the job as well and was not as dependable right. as I was. But there were affirmative action laws mm -hmm. which probably required that. Right. Um, so, so you're still coming back to the authority. Yeah. So that was another. Writing, that was writing another statutes or whatever that that is, is. It's not. It's not by merit anymore. It's it's whatever quota right. the the and law that was, says. And I that was doubly law. bad because I'm bombarded constantly with messaging that says that's not what happens. That because I'm white, I have an advantage. Except right. in every every time I turn right. around, I'm finding I don't actually have right. an advantage. Right. I have a disadvantage right. because of this. Now. That's a problem in and of itself, but it's not as big a problem as people lying about it. Right. Saying, you, you know, you get all the perks because you're because you're a white person. How did they present it to you, though? I mean, did they when they came in and they and did they fire you or left you as part time? Um, they left me as part time, but I said, well, at that I, point, I'm done. Yeah, I just so this, you this is on, the way it is. You I'm, I'm you know. It's your station. Do whatever right. you want, but I I can't participate. Right. Well, let me give you this. let me give you this just a real short story about Allstate. So I was in human resources with Allstate, and we had something called the the office of 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 um, OFCCP, the office of uh, federal compliance, which was any anybody who was connected to the federal government had to follow OFCCP. Affirmative action OFCCP is on top of that, and even more strict. So we had to follow that that rule because those rules, those regs, because uh, we leased buildings, all state-owned buildings, and we leased them to the federal government. So we had to follow OFCCP, and I was the OFCCP agent for for Roanoke. They came in, and we had to do all these reports every single month. We had to send them to our rep, uh, the federal government in Richmond. Uh, we had to send all this information. We had four building en engineers that handled this whole building. And we didn't have any minorities. And they told us if you hire a fifth one or one of the four leave, you have to hire you have to hire a female minority. Okay, they didn't they didn't care whether the person knew how to deal with the HVAC system or our boilers or they didn't care any about that. All they were saying was, here are the numbers. You're underutilized in that particular job title. And basically what we had to do is is we had to look for somebody, a, a male, mm -hmm. a female minority that had all these skills that there wasn't probably a female minority within the state that had those kind of things. You know, so, and, and this was a federal regulation and, that, and that we, had a, to, we had to, we had to follow it. That is it was, a perfect example of, of postmodern thought because you're experiencing the reality of that very thing happening in a society that says it doesn't happen. Right. We are constantly right. told there are no quotas. You're not right. required to do this. That's right. all a lie, and that's all not true. It's absolutely true there are. It's absolutely true that right. just what you said. Except the general perception of people is that that's just a lie made up by by white right. men to complain. Right. It's not really true. No, right. it's true. Right. Um, so that's how, that's what you have to figure out how. How do you move that at all in the culture? And we'll talk about that in just a bit, though. Well, what you really want. Is 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 for people not to mistreat other people based on gender and race. Right. That's that's the ideal. But what ends up? But the fix to that problem coming from the government is that you actually do that in an effort to undo something right. that you were trying to do in the right. first place. And what right. you end up doing is is the exact thing you think you're fixing. Right. It doesn't it doesn't fix it. It actually makes the situation worse. Because right. now you probably have a minority 
in a job that you had to hire. It was the best you could get, and they're in a job they're not suited for. Right? Um, how does that? How how on earth is that good for them? Right. That's a, that's right. A, I would hate. It's almost cruel. It, I mean, I would hate just... to have applied for a job I really wanted. I got it because of, of I'm a guy because I'm white because I'm tall whatever it is. Right. And I get in the job and find out I can't actually do it. Yeah. And and well, and they're experiencing that uh, with with a lot of minorities that are going to the uh, supposed the elite schools, the Harvards and the um, you know the Yales and those kind of thing that they're because because they're allowing uh, people to go in there and not be qualified to compete with everybody else that was at their top of their class in the high school. They're failing, you know. So it I understand how I understand your your concern about that. What would you? Okay, so let, let's go back to let's go back to the um, to the U.S. history, and how did we get here, and and your love of liberty and try can you tie all that stuff together for me? Because one of the things that I've always been impressed about you is that is the fact that you know how this thing got off track. Okay, and I think affirmative action is one example of was there a better way to have done this? You know, the because I still had to hire the best. Um, uh, building engineer, you had to be the supposedly the best person for that full time position for on air talent. What could we have done differently in that particular circumstance? And when how, when did we get off track here? And I know that's a really deep question. So let's pick a part of it. Well, most most of the time, if you're if you're creating laws and rules to manipulate people's behavior to something unnatural okay that's a great <laughs> okay. it's it's going to it's not going to solve the problem you're trying to solve and it's going to create a new problem on top on top of it okay so like and and if you want to use racism and affirmative action so the problem is that is that it's innately human to make judgments based on race Eye color, yeah, everything. Where your is, nationality, right? right. Uh, what what football team you right. like? Are you part of my tribe or are you somebody else's exactly. tribe that I have to be wary that's just, of? Yes, that's, that's just, just human. human, right? And 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 if you're trying to pass laws to fix that, you're not. You can't write a law that will stop someone who's a racist from being racist. Okay. Yes, you can. You can have hate speech laws. It won't stop them from being racist. They'll just right. be in jail. They'll be a racist in jail, but or they're they'll still. Be, but they'll be quiet. But they're still they'll racist. They'll be quiet, and then we won't have to hear from them. No. I just sent us down a rabbit yeah. hole, and you know I did. So we'll so, go. We'll go uh, back to that. So. I can't wait to see the comments below this. You can't. <laughs> right. You can't. You, Greg Aldridge. <laughs> you can't. You can't create laws that are going to change people's nature. What the law right. should do is not allow people's nature to violate other people. It should be about it should be about the the mm -hmm. the uh, action of violation rather than the belief. Right. Some people over the course of their lives they will become unracist because their experience with people with other races mm -hmm. and people they become close to will teach them that. It will happen naturally. Right. Others may never come out of out of their bubble right. and may never experience that. But it doesn't matter. What matters is that people are not abusing other people. That's right. that's what right. that's what really needs to needs to be dealt with. Right. If if your focus is we you know sixty percent of the country today is racist and we want to get it to forty percent, well, you're not going you're not going to you know you may you may hide away those twenty percent. Right. See, you may put them in concern. jail. Yeah. You may you know they may yeah. they may not do anything overtly racist that right. you can see and you think you've right. achieved it, but you didn't make them not racist. Right. They still are racist. Right. Um, but what you now have is is a weapon that can basically be wielded by by people, uh, by politicians, by bureaucrats, and if they are of a mind to use these for selfish reasons, you've, you've, you've offered them the perfect way to do so. And it absolutely gets, gets used in that right. way. Uh, um, but if, if probably any anything you look at in history, if, if you just look at, at, at American history, because we've done uh, we've gone a long way in trying to micromanage mm -hmm. micromanage people's thought and beliefs and behavior through through law, mm -hmm. um, and that's probably what has been the biggest departure from from the foundation of of free choice and liberty that 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 we were 
meant that you know that we were designed that we were mm -hmm. designed as. Uh, most of that, by most people, is done for altruistic reasons. They are trying to make things better, and they right. are trying to help people. They they just are missing one one great big piece of of, of information, and that is you you can't uh, uh, you can't legislate what somebody is going to think or be. Right. All you can do is say we will not allow you to murder people. Right. If you do, we will prosecute and punish you. You're not allowed to steal from people. You're not, you know, you're not allowed to assault people. You're not allowed, you know, you're not allowed to fraud people. Right. They, it doesn't matter color, gender, nationality. Right. These things are wrong. Right. But if you go out every day and every time you see a woman or a minority, you think, some, you know, you you've got some a Polish joke running through your head to make fun of them. Well, that's it, you're you're not a nice person for that. Right. But that's just that's just the world. Right. Trying to uh, you, we can't pass a law that's going to change that. Right. There, it, that that's impossible. And if you do, you didn't change it. You changed the appearance of it, and you created another problem. Right. Um, well, and some of the stuff. I mean, like hate speech. I want I want the racists to go to the to the middle of Roanoke and put a soapbox and start talking racist stuff. I don't want them going underground. Yeah. You know, so you sit there and you go, okay. So what is it you're actually so so one of your one of your premises is if you create a law, you're probably creating something worse. There's unintended consequences mm -hmm. for that. So so you're for limited government, limited laws. Would what kind of laws would would be acceptable to you? Because you and I have had this conversation about like regulation. Okay, I grew up in a place, uh, Buffalo, New York. We had Love Canal. A uh, hooker chemical was pouring stuff into Lake Erie. Lake Erie became a cesspool. Uh, as soon as they, the, the way it got resolved is they sued, the federal government came in, sued Hicker, uh, Hooker Chemical, created super funds to clean up the mess. They stopped pouring stuff in the Roanoke or in the Lake Erie. Lake Erie actually turned over, and now it's one of the cleanest lakes of the, of the Great Lakes, which I don't know how any of that works. But, but, um, uh, that was a regulatory environment that cleaned up that mess because the belief is if a government, whether it's state or federal, doesn't regulate commerce or the capitalist urges that people are going to do bad things for a profit motive. So does the government play a role there and how and how much a role would you be comfortable with? The, the role government was designed to play in, in American society was maintaining a legal system that would allow injured parties okay. redress against against perpetrators. Right. To to so it would be to, totally within the legal system. It wouldn't be regula regulations against hooker. It would be somebody saying, "Hey, you're be, polluting the be, lake that would, I'm." Right. It would be the fishermen. Right. Who now their fish are their fish are dead. Right. And, and they know where it's coming from. they know from. where it's so, coming from. So therefore, they, I can just sue exactly. rather that's, than regulate that them. Is the That's the, the under, a, under a liberty foundation, that's the way you deal with problems. And we had that system already in place. Right. Um, but, that, the, the re but that's not proactive. That's reactive. That's what I think that would be the best argument for it because... Uh, that's a reactive thing. I've already have I already have a company pouring stuff into. Well, you already into had Lake. it anyway. Before the before. You yeah, I did, but the regulation supposedly is to limit or eliminate whatever the bad things are going to happen in the future. I think that's the the main definition of right. regulation. Right, Re regulation is designed it's, it's to it's designed to create prior restraint from doing exactly. These is that not true? It, is that, it, it in 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 most cases it doesn't. Because there's well, I got to put my seatbelt on, and now I put my seatbelt on. So I don't wear seatbelt anymore. Uh, as soon as they told me I was going to be prosecuted, and my family's my family's money was going to have to be turned Do you over. You want that edited out? No, <laughs> to turned over to government because I'm not wearing it. Right. I lost the taste for for wearing my seatbelt. Before that, I was the seatbelt Gestapo. But you're a, but you're a really smart person. You don't wear your seatbelt when you drive. Not not. What if you get thrown out of not the car when you? I do in the Jeep. It's a convertible. You don't have the yeah. doors on, but in a regular car, I, if I'm getting in the car just to drive down to the store, I'm like, yeah. I, I, I don't. I, sometimes I'm in the car, and eventually I'll go. Okay, I'll go ahead and put it now on. Now I'm worried about you. You um, should wear your seatbelt. But it was probably a good idea. I did. Do you, Do you think that that was a good idea? Was it a good regulation to 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 increase the cost of a car to try to eliminate deaths? 
because that's basically what happened in the 60s or 70s whenever we started having that having and, having people have a greater propensity to 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 survive accidents is a is a noble pursuit giving you just po don't giving like politicians the, uh, the a, a new way to take your family's money as a penalty right. for it that was the wrong. That is completely a wrong and bad and horrible way to, to I gotcha. have, dealt, have dealt with it. Okay, so when they required seatbelts back in the day, uh, or required me to hire a minority building and female building engineer, or whatever the situation is, there's in your mind there's always a better way of doing it, and most of the time the better way is lack of government intervention. The is yeah. that is that kind of your baseline thought if, though? Yes. And then you figure out if people, what can government if, do based on the constitution. They people should be allowed to make decisions, make choices, and live their life the way they want to, as long as they are not violating other people. Right. Actual violations. I don't mean violation in the sense that that you have my the door on my house is red and you don't like red, and so therefore you're going to get the right. you're going to get the right. city to change the code, yeah. so no red yeah, doors. Yeah, some of that's silly. That's not I mean, a violation. Right. A violation is if I broke into your house and took your stuff. It's if if it's if I if I physically harmed you, if I murdered you, if you know, mm -hmm. those are vi those are actual violations. Um, me me planting a certain kind of tree in my yard that's not a violation of, of right. Me having a certain type of roof on my house, me not wearing my seatbelt. It's right. not a violation of of, right. of any anybody else. Um, and, so, well, let me ask this one because it, it, this this is really interesting to me. So, and then we'll get back to some of the other things. Um, so, what about zoning? Okay, so people who may have, have seen I'm involved with uh, uh, Southwest Virginia Wildlife Center through my nonprofit Transform Roanoke, and they're dealing with a zoning issue. So. Do you think it's do you think it's appropriate for local government to be able to say what can be built on a specific piece of land no. for the for the benefit of the other homeowners in that particular? No. So so you would be okay if somebody came uh, on your property next to your property and built a uh, 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 water treatment plant. I have let's to be. say. If I want the freedom to do what I want to do on my land, I have to allow my neighbors the freedom to do what they want to do. Okay. As long as what they're doing doesn't cross the line and start to violate me doing yes. what I'm doing on my land. Right. Just it being there is not right. a violation of me. What would this and, and we're going to like it. We're I gonna, won't I wouldn't like it. But right. but I but to, but I understand, to get to the liberty you, yeah, you have I understand to allow that it. there's lots of open land around right. where I live and someday a developer may buy the hundred acres that's next to me and I'm gonna have a housing development right. there. Right. You know the nor an av the average person would be getting involved in in the uh, in the in their local county government to try to stop a right. variance that somebody's right. trying to get so that they could right. build that neighborhood and and I would never do that. Right. I don't want it there. I don't right. want the noise. I don't want the commotion. I don't. So want you the people. would not use the the already existing power of government to your own benefit. Absolutely not. It should be removed. Okay. Not exploited. Okay. Okay. Well, um, at least you're intellectually honest. You should wear your seatbelt, though. I still wear it a lot. <laughs> you're supposed to wear it all the time because it's going to keep you safe, and I need you around. So just wear your seatbelt. <laughs> Forget the law. Wear your seatbelt. Okay, so I want to go back. I want to go back to hey Marley. I want to go back to um, the point where where this all. I think this all ties together through what rights do people have, and where do they come from? Okay, because you, you were talking about you were moving towards the the belief in God, and mm -hmm. and now you're a believer. Okay, so. Uh, but but because when we um, have the Rono Tea Party meeting, you talk about where do rights come from every single time. Does that all tie together in your mind for the type of government that we should have? Because well, we I've been using something you've said to a lot of people, and I want to just make sure right. that I've got it right before I keep saying it. On paper, we have that government. In reality, we're not following that paper. Right. So... We created a, a, a republic in, in the 18th century um, that was based on the premise that you have, that you own yourself, 
Right. You have the right to your to your life, to your choices. That these, this is this is this is all yours and nobody mm -hmm. else's, and that you were born with it. Now, for many people, being born with it equates to this is what God gave you. But you mm -hmm. don't have to be, you don't have to believe in God. Okay. To understand that nobody owns you. But you how know, were you born into it? Because let's say, for example, you grew up in in Russia. Mm -hmm. uh, at the point where they had pretty much co total control of their citizenry, those people they, they were born with whatever Russia sure. was going to give them. So no, was, they were they were born just like every other person that's born on the uh, planet. Okay. They own themselves. They just happen to be born in a geography where the controlling government is not going to let them Got it. Okay. operate that and way. It doesn't believe, mean they don't have those rights. It means they have a government that's going to violate them. Okay, and you and you believe that you don't have to believe in God to understand that that this is that me and yourself. I have exactly. I own myself and I have certain things that I can do that no one else should be allowed to stop me from doing. Exactly. Right. Um, it's it's self-ownership. If you don't want to believe in God to get there, you don't. that's fine. Okay, got it. But you own yourself. Nobody. Otherwise, how can, how can anybody make a case that they own you? Right, right. Um, and that's well, and that's they're a, more powerful than you are. So then, it's a question of how well, much power am I going to exert well, they to haven't stop made, them from right. doing? So they haven't made a, they haven't made a legitimate case as to why they own you. Right. They've, made they a, just, they've made a case using violence to actually take control of you. Right. It doesn't mean they're right. Right. They haven't they haven't won the argument. They've won the war. Right. Um, and and essentially that 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 principle was what was supposed to be instilled in, in the government that we created in, in, in American society. It says it in the Declaration of Independence. It's spelled out very, very specifically. The Constitution is, was put in place to build a government around, around the, the principles that were, that were mm -hmm. spelled out. And this was a new understanding um, in the world. No government, right. no, governing, you know, no governing idea put into practice in the history of the world had, uh, had ever done what what or, or right. was based on what right. we what we built this on but like with anything else you know the idea is amazing it was it was groundbreaking the the uh the physical carrying out of that idea into into a government that was where they failed you can't have a you can't have a governing principle that says all all men are created equal and then design a government based on that that then decides well Everybody's not actually equal. If you're if you're black, you right. know, you're or well, we had moral and, failings. And blacks weren't the only were, slaves; they were Irish slaves. Right. But people, you're not actually born equal. Everybody's born equal, except the ones who are owned by other people. Right. That was what we wrote into the wrote right. into the Constitution at the beginning. That was an abject failure to carry out the right. principles. Um, it is a major disappointment. Do you think that they assumed that that was going to happen just because of the power of the words, or did they, did you think that they? And and I haven't read as much of the of the you know papers that backed up the uh, Constitution. But do you think when they wrote those those things in the Declaration of Independence that they they thought that it was going to take decades and decades and decades, or that it would never be resolved, or that it was going to be resolved as soon as they wrote those words? Um. They didn't think it was going to be resolved until they broke from the government they would under create one based on it. So they thought that they, that was part of their process. Here's here's right. here's what we have come to believe is is the natural way of governance for people, right. and a proper way. But um, we've already screwed it the up. The king, so we've got the to... king, won't let us live this way. So we are going to break from you, and we're going to create a government that does this, right. so that we can we can live by what we've come to understand is the proper way to do things. Right. Um, and of course, the government they were under governments never just let you go. There had to be a fight. Right. Uh, we won the fight, right. and then they went on to the the, the next right. step. You know, step three, which is create the government, and. It's all just theory until you until you write the rules, right. and that was where you had to deal with that the was where they. So now it. you're back to the the reality of this. Now brings everybody's nonsense back into the equation. Mm -hmm. So you had plenty of people uh, at the con at that Continental Congress who were arguing for not for not uh, legitimizing slavery and not allowing it in the in the new country. Right. Uh, you had a lot of people. You had some people who said. I don't care. I have slaves. I want to keep them. And right. I have friends that have them. We want to keep right. them. Then you had people who who were like, 
I'd rather us be free, but if we don't have them, we won't start a government. Yeah. Like if we right. if we don't it figure had to out be a compromise so somewhere. They decide and if had I been there, had I been a delegate, I may have been the one that stopped the whole thing from ever happening because I would never have compromised that. Right. I would have looked back at the Declaration of Independence that I agree with these five things. You're right on the money. And we didn't just fight a war Right. To half-ass our way through this stuff. Right. We fought a war because this is what we said we wanted to live by. And now some of you are saying, well, we only sort of want to live right. by it because I'm going to have to give up some stuff to live well, by. Well, and the there, was, there was economic consequences of, you know, eliminating slavery. I there mean, was there, there economic were consequences. Yeah, there were, there were security consequences. Right. There was all kinds of consequences. There's always good, good, there's always what people consider to be good reasons to do the wrong thing. Right. That doesn't mean you do the wrong thing right. just because just because somebody's made a good argument for the wrong thing. Wrong is wrong. Right. And and instilling the ownership of people into the new government was absolutely wrong. Now, I understand why it was pragmatic. I understand why many of them thought it was necessary. I understand the peacemakers in the middle who know if we have any chance of having a country at all, right. we got to make a compromise here or we're, or we're never going to get anywhere. You know, maybe that's why I'm not suited to interact with people in that way because I have a I'm not going to uh, to to compromise right. Right. on on those five things when it comes to the governance of human beings. Right, and we'll write those five things in the comments below because they they're really really important. Um, they're paragraph two of the Declaration of yeah. Independence, all five yep. of them. They're right there in yep. order. Um, so that the that failure set in motion a set of events. That, right. that that got us to where we are now. Had they, let's say that they, they hadn't, you know, the, the other two options would have been they never were able to come to an agreement on any of that. Yeah, that's we never, interesting. We never formed a country. I wonder if anybody's ever done a a, a, a mockumentary or whatever, which what would have imagined. Been? Yeah, had imagined that. Um, that if that if it, it just didn't pull together, I've seen I've seen one that was what happens if what would happen if the North lost the the yeah. the war between the states, uh, and that and I think their pre, I, the premise is interesting, but I think they they drew incorrect conclusions from what would have happened. Probably slavery um, forever. Is yeah, that, that, is that, that what they came. Oh yeah, yeah. It, it, yeah. it was yeah. and, and slavery and, and would that never and that wasn't even the reality at the time. Right, that's the postmodern reality we've been taught. Right, um, but so either. They made compromise, and we ended up with the country we got. That's how we got here. They would have never been able to compromise, and instead of having one united country, you'd have had multiple countries. Yeah. You may have had these slave-owning states. They start a country. These, you know, these, well, like these Afghanistan. States, you would states. have tribes here, tribes there, and there'd be no um, li no lines, and you'd be fighting each other so, all the time. So we may, well, but we wouldn't have anything to fight about. Amongst each other. Yeah. Well, and there were plenty of resources, so people could move. They could. Sure. They could leave. They could uh, find. They could find their own piece of land away from um, everybody else if they didn't want to deal with the, other people. The third option is is that no countries were ever created, and the thirteen colonies became fourteen, and 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 as yeah. as the West was 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 one, um, you'd have added more small units. Yeah. To, um, but they would have not have been organized in a in a into a republic of, right. of these units. They would have right. they'd have just been we we you know we'd be fifty separate countries and in, in, uh, who know, you know, who knows. But right. that's the third possibility is that right. is that is is that it went that way. Well, let me let me um, go back to something because I don't want to get too far off track with this idea about see so so I've been saying to people that if you believe in God then you have certain things that are endowed by the creator that were that that are part of you okay so you said you don't need that that confirmation of of a supreme being to say that when i'm born i have certain i have certain things that nobody gave me that are mine that that i have to well and i'll tell you where i'm going with this and then and then you can respond to the to the this idea so I'm watching The Crown because I've been very, very interested in how did we get from this king to what we have now, okay? Because I understand, I understand it going in this direction from the United States prior to our development back to the king, but I didn't understand what the king was there for. It didn't make any sense to me. Why do they still have a queen? It didn't make any sense. But then I realized that the Church of England was the national religion and the queen or the king was the leader of the Church of England mm -hmm. and there was a divine connection between God and the king 
that allowed the king to act like God. Correct. And therefore, and therefore, the monarchy could do whatever they wanted to do because whatever they did came from God because of that divine connection based on that. Right. And we basically severed that and said, no, we're not, we're not going to deal with this intermediate king. We're just going to, if you believe in God, you've got God, and God gives you certain things when you become a person, when you're, when you're conceived, and you become a person. So you don't need that. You don't need the connection to God because you just, you just believe. Because we're, eventually we're going to have a conversation about be, abortion. I'm, that's where I'm going. I'm trying can, to figure out. It can be helpful. Now, I can understand. But, you have certain things that I can't infringe upon. For the same reason that I don't want you infringing on my stuff. So you should be able to say what you want to say. I should be able to say what. If you punch me in the nose, I probably should be able to punch you in the nose again. But you shouldn't punch me in the nose because it's 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 mine. Don't don't hurt me. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, if it's my piece of land and you're living next to me, don't throw garbage on my piece of mm -hmm. land. I'm not going to throw garbage on your piece of land. So it all makes sense to me. It's just I'm trying to understand where the God part fits into this. And is it necessary to run the country? Because we keep saying it's a Judeo-Christian country, and we got a lot of our values from that from that um, um, history. Well, we we, we through, did through the Bible. Um, our judicial system is is based uh, is based on on natural law, which right goes all the way back to the to the Ten Commandments. So. Um, uh, we don't actually have that legal system anymore. We don't even have the legal system we were given in the Constitution, right, much right, less that one. Right. But it's it that's its that was its its foundation. Um, not all of the founding fathers were Christians, um, but most of them were. Right. Um, well, a lot of them were deists. They, they believe in God, yeah. but not a personal um, God or whatever. But and but believing being being Christian, believing in God. In some cases, can be just as problematic at getting somebody to understand, to understand the 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 their rights, as believing. Because if you're if you are misinterpreting the the God of of the of the Bible, right, and misinterpreting the instructions and misinterpreting the stories, then you then you can find in there the ability to justify uh, oppressive governmental control of human beings. It's there. Sure. Oh yeah. If you're if you're if you if you want to twist what you find in a way that the the that will get you there, it'll get you there. Right. Um, but you have to be just as aware of that tendency, that human nature tendency, when you're talking about religion as you are when you're talking about government, because human nature is, is oh sure. Is human nature is um, the underlying denominator for but all of that. I think if 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 on 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 using God as a foundation for 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 the for rights. Um, at its most basic level, if uh, the the Christian God created us with free will, now you can interpret you can interpolate from that that if we were meant to be controlled by other people or by anything, mm -hmm. God would would control us. Why on earth would God create a race of people, give them the ability to freely make their own decisions, mm -hmm. but then expect Somebody else he stuck on the planet right. to actually take the if, take those decisions away to take that freedom away. Right. God didn't make us free so that we could enslave to each other. Right, and that's that's what government that's what governments right. are, have essentially done. All governments of the world have basically created have created a system that enslaves people to them, which is a violation of God having given you freedom right. to begin with. Right. If, if God had wanted us to be wanted us to be controlled by somebody or something else, He would have made us that way, but He didn't. He specifically made us with the ability to make choices, self-direct our behavior, and mm -hmm. and and He gave us freedom. So it only goes that that's the way we should be treating each other. That's the way God is treating us. We right. should be treating each other that way. Um, there's plenty of things you can go into the Bible where you can say, no, 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 God meant meant us to be subservient to, to right. you know, and there, if if you twist certain quotes, you can twist what Jesus said about about the money. You can, I mean, there's right. all kinds right. of ways to to argue against that um, if you want to misinterpret, you know, other things that were said right. and done in the Bible. But you can't, you still can't get away from the fact that God created free beings. 
there's no way he created them so that that they could be slaves to something else other than him. Right. That's just that's just well, and he and, and there's a there's a lot of you know when you when you talk about ex, Exodus, you know, he's freeing you know the people from slavery. I mean, the, I think there's a lot of I think there's a lot of validity. Well, he allows a lot the, of slavery too. Right. Right. Uh, and that's what that's what people um, will say that. And but, uh, I think we I think throughout history we've been grossly uh, we have grossly misunderstood. God's intentions and his and his uh, interaction in in what we're what we are doing. Um, if if God created us to be free beings and make decisions on our own, some of those decisions are going to be bad. Mm -hmm. Many of those decisions are going to hurt other but people. But he always put a leader in charge. You know, I mean, you have stories of David and Solomon and all this. So I think some people would say that there has to be a leader, or there'll just be chaos because. You know, people will. You know, I guess. I guess they still come back to zoning, and I'm not saying zoning's good. It's just that, what would the world look like without a government or some entity putting in streets and saying, "Okay, this is going to be a res residential area." Many of the streets you think down, many of the streets you think government put in were actually done by private contractors. Yeah, that's that true. That's that true. They'll buy a big. In piece fact, of some land, of the oldest neighborhoods all of this, all right of here in our area. city. When yeah. you go and look at the plans, the yeah. roads, yeah. all of that was actually designed, built, and paved by the, by the people who built the houses. I agree. You know, this wasn't it, a god. This was not the gov the city I government's plan. It. But it was individual people. Do you ever do you ever sit and think about what would it look like if the government, as created, would have been carried out? Do you ever do you ever think about what the world would look, what the United States would look like? I think and w when you look at that, when you look at that picture, is it chaos or is it is it a lot of people living in freedom and liberty together and would, would would there be less problems or more problems? I guess that's the starting point. It would be, be it would be chaotic order. Because and you, what do we have now? Could, I, if you termed, what the hell is this? Now because this sucks. I mean, this is now what we now what we have is chaotic control. There's a difference between order and control. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, that's a good way of putting it. If you if you if you get everybody to, to agree on on what the basic actual crimes are. Rape, murder, right? Uh, uh, Viol uh, violations of people, uh, right. person, and and property. Um, I mean, you can put a what, whole bunch that's of them what right the, in there. That's that's why we put a government in place to, to 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 create laws and a judicial system. It wasn't so that you couldn't say a certain word on television. Right. It was right. so you had a way to to, if not prevent, at least punish yeah, and, deal, the, the, and deal yeah. with. When somebody actually creates a actual criminal violation of another person, right. um, and that's what I mean by order. With that in place and being followed and properly maintained, you have a mental order outside of which people are free to do what they want. Which, which to which to OCD control freaks is going to look like chaos. Right. People making choices on their own. You can make a case for why that's chaos, but as long as the the basic tenet of governance is met which is it's there to protect to protect your actual rights right. so that you make all the decisions you want unless your decision is to kill your neighbor unless your right. decision is to is to steal this person's cow right. whatever whatever that is mm -hmm. that's 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 the order part of it um, unfortunately I, i've come to understand that people are incapable of carrying that out when we're, we're never going to we're never going to have. We were. Do you think this was inevitable? That by human nature, we always wanted somebody to control, uh, or to temper our free will. Um, is, is there any so way? Is there any way that we could have done this differently and not been in the place we are now? Um. And I know you have specific well, amendments. Well, we, we, we may and not be. We may not that be were in, voted that right. you didn't like. And we we'll, may not be in the place that we're in now. But even if they had, even if they had built the exact right republic based on the principles in the in the in, in the Declaration of Independence, at the outset they would have we would have still screwed it up, because human beings don't 
ultimately the, don't, the nature of them doesn't change. And the nature of human beings is going to be to classify themselves into groups. It's going to, followers are going to look for leaders. People who want to be leaders are going to find followers. These are things that are right. always going right. to ha are always going to happen. Now, if you can if you can get everybody to agree to to it could have gotten everybody to agree in perpetuity to the original rules written in, right. in, the, in, in, the right. in the Constitution, then you could still do all those things. You just wouldn't be able to do it using the deadly force of government to, as a tool to make it happen. You would be forced to make it happen through through uh, uh, your free choice and and other people's consent to be a part of it. Right. That's the proper way to do just about every any, anything you can think of, the proper way to do it is by people who who agree and want to consent coming together to do it. Right. Um, not by right. one person deciding this is the right way, and I'm going to use I'm going to use you know bureaucrats with guns to point them at you to force you to behave this way because I know it's the right thing to do. Right. That's the wrong way to do it. That's right. the way we do do it. Right. That's but it's not the right but way. But you do spend it. a huge amount of time as a political consultant trying to fix the system or adapt the system or nudge the system and you didn't obviously have this belief that human nature is what human nature is right. it was it was the it took you a while to get there yeah, it or? was the it was all of the political activity and the and in the you know the, the the fighting in that arena that where i really learned the most about the true nature of 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 human beings i mean i went into it obviously thinking you could change this. Right. You could put the right people in that, place to, yeah. to I mean, back us up a little bit and get closer to the, the founder's belief. Yeah, we're, we are um, propagandized at a, from a very young age to believe that, you know, protest marches are, mm -hmm. are, are how you, you change the opinion of your rulers. Voting is how you change your, who your rulers are. Right. That all things are possible through these four or five busy work uh, mm -hmm. Political activities that we're taught are the proper are the proper ways to go about right. things, um, but if you look throughout history, no no good real measurable change ever happened in the history of the world using those methods. Didn't you we know, get out of the Vietnam War because somebody put a a, a flower in the rifle of a no. of a uh, we got out of the Vietnam War officer. because because Walter Cronkite and others in in the media complex were against the war and they and they tainted their news to turn people against the right. war so public sentiment would and showed would, a lot would, of pictures would grow so yeah, huge Israel. that the political that the political powers of the day would be forced to to, to give up what that what right. they were doing because right. they were overwhelmingly outnumbered by people who believe differently um, and uh, and, I, and I'm, I'm not making a case for or against the war. Right. I'm just explaining Trying the to figure out why just, it This ended. is just the dynamic that, right. that, that happened. Um, uh, but I think that's still there because that's where that's where the first time now now I'm I'm 62. That's the first time that I remember protests appearing to change the outcome of a political structure. Mm -hmm. And it was Walter Concrete. Concrete. I'm, I'm convinced that he was just because, he was well, and he was very trusted. And then all of a sudden he came out and he said, "Oh, look at these pictures." And then all of a sudden we had. It was one of the first times where I think there was there was um, uh, unfiltered photos and video that didn't go through the government. You know, because prior to that they had newsreels for World War II and Korea, and you saw what the government wanted you to see. Mm -hmm. And this was probably the first time where people were actually going there and taking pictures and coming back or, or docking, doc, uh, documenting what was actually happening. We saw we saw the horror of all that. Well, I still remember the little girl who got napalmed. Remember that picture? Mm -hmm. That was in uh, Life magazine with a little girl running down the street that you know, with no clothes that got napalmed and, you know, those kind of things. I think that's the first time that the the marketing public relations, sure. emotional, oh my God, we got to get out of there. What are we doing there? If the you picture know, that, that you saw on the cover of Life magazine had it been 25 South Koreans being shot in the back of yeah, the head exactly. by, by Chinese forces yep. and thrown in a mass grave, yep. you might have had a different opinion exactly. about, about the Vietnam. Exactly. War. But, but, Cronkite didn't show you those pictures right. because he wanted the war to stop. He showed you the ones that were going to that were going to lead to exactly. the outcome he wanted. Exactly. Um, and I'm not pro-war. I'm, I'm pro-truth. Right. 
that and that's that's my problem. And 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 this that's another that's another issue today. There's a meme that floats around on the internet. I saw it this morning, and I had to respond to it again. I uh, that said, once upon a time there was a man uh, who only reported the truth, and, oh. and you know you could trust him <laughs> right. to give you the facts. Right. And and we've come so far from that. And I had to go. Actually, that's not true. Yeah. Um, Walter Cronkite lied to you with some of the facts. Mm -hmm. Because he was anti-war and he wanted you to be anti-war, um, and I got the typical response. The first, you know, the response you, you 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 typically get from that is, "Well, thank God somebody was trying to stop the war." I'm like, I, I would have right, tried to stop right. the war too. Right. I'm not attacking him for being pr against right. the war. I'm attacking him from for propagandizing you right. and not giving you the full truth. Well, that's but, the problem. That is the problem. But one of the, one of the reasons why you see a lot of that stuff is that people are people are struggling for something that no longer exists. You know the the and I and I talk about this all the time. My neighborhood was a community. Okay, we took care of each other. Okay, that doesn't exist anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and there's lots of reasons why. But people are struggling for something. And even though we had we had three television stations, they all said the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. You know, but that's all we had. So we thought it was the truth. So some that person's probably saying, "I remember when Walter Conkite said this," and we all come together, and you know, we all we all believe the same thing. What's what we're doing now is we're creating we're creating a society where you can't believe in anything anymore. Okay, that some of the bedrocks of society, whether they were true or not, mm -hmm. we could argue. But a lot of the bedrocks of society has just been evaporated. They they just go away. And now somebody's looking for. Wasn't it great back in the '60s when we had Walter Cronkite? You know, I I think that's reaching out for something that no longer exists. I think it probably never actually existed. Well, that's my point. At, at yeah, time, that's my point. At the time, it was the the world you lived in was perceived that right. way by some people. Right. It was perceived in a completely different way by other people, and people are nostalgic. The ones who believed it was that way are nostalgic today for right. that because of, because of where we where we are today. But if you want to go back to the go back to the sixties. Um, or 50s, you want to go back to post-World War II and that period between that and, and, and Vietnam, um, sure, there were a lot of... Society was different in a lot of good ways, but you still had a lot of the things that make it bad. You, mm -hmm. still, you still had racism. You had racism, yeah. actually, yeah. Not, just, yeah. not just in the Constitution right. allow, allowing, allowing slavery. You had it written into local right. laws right. Um, at yeah. the time. So this... This wonderful time in, right. in the in the well, baby boom was growing up simpler. Was it? I think it was simpler. Whether it was it, it was more truthful or not, I think we could argue. That's a much better word. Sim it, it was simpler. Yeah, it was simpler. Um, you had three stations. They all said the same thing. Y'all were trying to struggle. There was my, in my neighborhood. Everybody kind of made the same amount of money. It was totally homogenous. We didn't have any black people, so everybody thought the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the the kids went to the went to the uh, either the Catholic school or they went to the public school. Everybody seemed to be fine. You know, it was just there was less there was less um, confusion and angst. I think I would say, but it was simpler. Mm -hmm. But I'm not real sure that it was it was truthful. It was not. It was not the golden age of of truth. Um, There's it, never been a golden age right, of truth. Right. Right. Exactly. There's it's been a, just a golden age of perceived truth. Right. Uh, but yeah. Um, so let me let me kind of let me kind of wrap this up because I I, I want to get to a, a kind of a stopping point here and see see where we go from here. Okay. So if you were to if you were to kind of sum up where we are right now with the divide that we have the political and the ideological divide and where you think this is going um, and then we'll just briefly talk about whether we can do anything about it or whether it's just kind of throw your hands up in the air and say okay it's all human nature because that's what we keep coming back to what do you think the What do you think the major problems are right now? We, you and I, had done a discussion on free speech and allowing people the the freedom to say what they want to say, um, and the cancel culture around that of trying to you know ruin somebody's reputation because they use the wrong word in a in a, a podcast or something like that. So, freedom of speech would be one of the things that would be on my radar. Um, you know the the idea of um, if you don't believe what I what I what 
I believe in the group that I belong with, we don't want any part of you and we're going to hurt you. We're not just going to we're not just going to exile you to your own group. We're going to try to hurt you. We're going to try to get rid of you some way. Um, where do you think we are now? Not talking about solutions. Where do you think we are now? What's the what's the biggest concern that you have? I, it, it, I probably answer that question differently today than I would have not long ago because of the human, con, you know, the human element in that. We're not we're not living in in in, in a time with events that are radically different than they were at any at any other time. Okay. Um, the, 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 the same things that plague us now have plagued you know, societies of people since the beginning. Um, you're, you know, you're going to have, you're going to have people to do things to other people out of greed. You're going to have poor, you're going to have, you know, homelessness or, or, mm -hmm. or, um, uh, it, these are, these are things that, were always and and will always and today are st you know mm -hmm. are are still. Um, that's not to say that we're not charged with doing something about it. Um, it it's just that those those tend to be uh, those tend to be the reasons that are ju are justifications for for much of of for much of what people do to other people. That, that they don't have a right to do, mm -hmm. you know. Think when you, you know, they they become the reasons why you you grow power to government and give them authority to do something because it's going to fix one of those things right. I just said. Now it didn't fix any of them. Right. We still have homelessness. We still. It's not. It's not fixing those things, um, because technically they they really can't be fixed. Um, so what do you do? Even with even Jesus knew that. He said, "The poor right. will always, always be with right. us." It's because, and why is that? It's because, being part of the Trinity of God, he knew this is how human beings are. Right. Um, uh, your job is to do the best you can do at helping other people, right? At, at taking care of of, of of other people, but they're always they're, they're, you're always going to have poor. You're always going to have right. starving. You're always going to have tragedy. You're always going to have all all of these things. The best you can do is the best you can do to help to help the people around you. That was the point of that. Um, but what what people seem to think is is that solving homelessness is just one more fundraiser, a march on Washington, right. and and a new set of laws away from fixing. That's not the case. It's never going to be the case. It's never been the case. There's no there's there's nothing in history you can point to that would that would that would be evidence that that's that that's accurate. Right. Um, What's what we have in practice is those things have created a a power monster in in our governing right. entities that have become the greatest tools and weapons given to given to uh, to to people who desire power over other people that have ever been created in the history of the world. Um, the reason the reason why they're 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 greater they're not radically different than powers you had under other governing yeah. forms. It's just because our system legitimizes these things, it 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 in the minds of people it legitimizes the use of them even when it's right. for, for wrong. Right. You know, you, when 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 a politician uses a specific law to get one over on somebody else and create right. whatever whatever it is, um, the fallback is well he followed the law. Right. I mean the that's and, and the law's there because we need this and we need that. And so basically you you've created society yeah, you know, you've a societal excuse everything. and made it and made yeah. it, and made bad good because it's legal. Um and that's 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 one of the grand misconceptions um in in human beings is that legality equates to morality. Right. Um it doesn't. Th somebody, you can't legislate. We morality, act we, you know, well and we, we act as if is if you're if you're following the law, you're moral. Or if you're not following the law, you're immoral. Right. When there are plenty of laws that are absolutely immoral, right. and if you follow them, you are immoral. Right. You may not be well, illegal, Jim but Crow. you're but you're, you know, <laughs> you're, you're immoral. Right. Exactly. Um, uh, the government deciding who could drink out of of uh, of one water fountain or another was the law, but it was immoral. Mm -hmm. um, so at the time, if you were following those laws. Then you are moral mm -hmm. because 
no matter how far we go, people still tend to equate those two things in whatever in whatever right. in whatever system right. system it is. Um, that's that's one of the one of the few notions um, that I try that I try to challenge people on to get them to understand. Because the I see a lot of times, and social media allows you to see a whole lot more people than we, than we ever right. did before. Um, uh, you know, removed through the through the lens of, of a digital communication. Um, but I think people are uh, you're seeing who people really are. They may be lying about who they are, but you're seeing you know you're right. seeing that too. Right. Um, I, I see that a lot that people that people justify some abuse of somebody because well they broke the law. Well, what law did they break? You know, let's talk about that law. Is that a legitimate law in the first right. place? Is have have you know, they, that's not a question on right. average that people that people. Oh, ask nobody about nobody that. cares about that. Um, that's like you said. That's the that's the you, small you, you, number right. of people that you're comfortable talking yeah. with because they're they're willing to get down to that level and understand. Well, maybe that law shouldn't exist in the first place. You know, everybody else says, "Oh no, it's a law." I mean, we're going to follow it because it's a law. Doesn't doesn't have to be moral. It's just a law. If if. History is ripe with examples of if, if you if you want to make a case that that legality and morality are, are equivalent, then his, you're going to have a oh, hard, yeah. you're going to have a hard time with history. Right. Uh, so it was it was it was the law to return escaping slaves mm -hmm. um, from non-slave states back to their owners in, right. in slave states. That was the law. So. Right. What you'd be saying then is that if you you're, you're if 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 a slave if an abused slave made it to your home in some other state from where he came from, that it was moral for you to turn dime on him and get him sent mm -hmm. back to to the abusive situation they were in. Right. Who in the world today would think that 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 that's moral? Right. Nobody. We have a whole different set of things we're wrong about morality right. today. Right. That one we generally have kind of right. figured out and we've created 10 other in, incorrect assumptions to replace it but at the time um, if you you know if, if you want to as a blanket uh, uh, practice say that if you're following the law you're moral well then then slavery was moral because mm -hmm. it was the law right um, you know in in Nazi Germany euthanizing um, euthanizing people with low IQs or with birth defects or whatever it is that was that was the law. Mm -hmm. So you'd be saying that that murdering these people is moral because right. it was legal. Um, I don't know how many of those examples you. Well, I know sometimes for with some people it doesn't matter how many yeah. examples you yeah. give. Yeah. It's not going to get them to understand that that all law is not moral. Right. And all law well, breaking is not immoral. Well, and, and part and part of the problem is the morality is is different than I would want it to be. There's a lot of people who have a morality that they're perfectly comfortable with that that hurts other people, but they don't see it that way. They they like you said, I'm I'm convinced that you're right that the majority of people who are doing anything in their daily life are doing it with good intent. They believe that they're doing the right thing for for probably a very screwed up reason, but they're they're thinking that they're doing good. But well, then, and they may even feel they're not doing it. they may even feel they're not doing good, so they do a a little bit of intellectual work so yeah, that they can right, decide right, they right. are because so it'll satisfy the fact that they feel like right. oftentimes people when they're doing wrong they kind of know it right and but they really want to do it anyway so they right. have to find an intellectual way to satisfy that to combat the the fact that 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 right. uh, they feel wrong right well, and they, they're like I said before, they're always going to have somebody who's going to come at them from a rational basis, and they have to have something to say. Mm -hmm. They just can't say, I feel that I'm right. They have to say, I'm right because whatever the rationality is, whether it's this shallow or, or it doesn't make yeah. sense at oh, yeah. all or with whatever, pe with people they have to can, come up with something. With people, it can be, I was just following the law. You know, right. with law enforcement officers, it's going to be, I'm just following orders. Right. With, you know, whatever, there's, you, you, you you'll, if, if it's something you want to do. Right. Or feel you need to do for whatever reason, then there are plenty of intellectually dishonest arguments that'll help you get right. there. Right. Right. Okay. So, <laughs> so I wanna I wanna just go about ten more minutes, and I want you to to answer the question that a lot of this seems like it's baked in the cake. Human nature is human nature. We're probably too far down the road of what the founders wanted the United States to look like to go back. 
Uh, doesn't seem like that's the that's the momentum right now. The momentum is probably more government and more power and people using it for their own purposes. Um, you're you're involved with um, uh, something called News Guardians. So truth is important to you. That's one of my tenants also. I have a nonprofit which I already mentioned, Transform Roanoke. So my question is. What are we supposed to do with all this? Do we just throw up our hands and say, it's not worth it? It's not worth trying to help the next person that I want to help with Transform Roanoke, to, to help the next person, the next neighbor in need, which is the term that we use. Um, I, want to, I want to make the world better. I also have a commitment to my calling, which is Dale speak out and talk about the things that are important and the truth and try to spread the truth, maybe try to change some young people's lives so that they can better understand the stuff that we're talking about rather than the indoctrination of the public schools and colleges and things like that. Um, you got this News Guardian site. We were talking about truth and media, I'm trying to get people to understand that they're being lied to in most cases. Uh, um, why are we doing this? What's the what's the what's the emphasis for this period of your life when you're saying, okay, I'm not real sure I can change the systems and the direction of most of this, but I still got to do this. Why? Why bother with all the stuff that you're working on? Um, well, I don't do most of it anymore. Well, you do um, news. You you do news um, guardians and and I do that when when. Why are you doing this video? Why do Why did you say yes to this? Because uh, you, you like asked. Because you like me. Yeah, it's it, yes. I'm only doing this because you wanted me to. Okay, so you don't think you're influencing anybody who's going to be watching this? Um, uh, does that Does that interest you at all? Um, sure. I'm just not optimistic about about these ideas influencing people in any great number anymore. Okay. Um, some people, sure, there'll, there'll be a few people, um, but what? What I would be asking people to come to an understanding of is so against human nature that it, it's unreasonable to believe that you could ever, you could ever make this the common understanding. Okay, are you of, at of peace with that? People, yeah, I am. Yeah, now. so you don't. I wasn't. You, okay. But How I long am. ago was it that you were still you were still a fighter that said you know I think I can help change this? Three years ago. Really? Probably. So it's been that recent. Yeah. Okay. Um. I mean that was my involvement in political activity and 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 you know working on on uh, you know issue advocacy and campaigns and you know and all of that was that I had a I, well one we're taught that's how you that's how you do yeah that's how, yeah, those are the way that you um, affect and, change and two you know you 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 think you, it, that that it'll that it'll work. Um, I mean, the, the 25 years I spent in politics was 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 uh, a, a giant learning opportunity to find out that's not that's not actually the case. Right. Um, and so I had to reevaluate. Was that wasted time in your mind, or was it was it? I think it was mostly wasted time. Wish but, you could have learned it quicker. Um, yeah. <laughs> well. Um, and uh, well, yeah, because the opportunity cost of that wasted time mm -hmm. is right. things that now I, I understand are, are a lot more important. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know that at the time because since I still believed you could fix things right. like this, I thought that work warranted you were in the, the massive yeah. uh, um, the um, uh, the massive amount of of time. Right. And resources that I was having to give up right. because it, getting this done is, is right. so important. Um, so what's important now? What's the most important thing in your life? I know you got your marketing business and you got a bunch of clients that you take care of, but what's the what's the most important part of your life right now? And what do you have to continue to provide for the world? Um, I think I've probably come more self become more selfish. Okay. Um, I mean that twenty five years of 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 fighting that for the good of of man, mm -hmm. I'm I'm probably going to spend the next 25 on on what I what you know what matters to me and the people around me that the, that I care about. Mm -hmm. and that's not to say I completely shut off doing anything for the you know for the world. Um, I think one of the greatest ways you can do things for the world is for doing the right things for the people that are in it that you have the ability to do things for mm -hmm. so embarking on, on on you know a giant plan to to 
to save the world is a useless gesture. Embarking uh, on a plan to help people in need that I can help that are around me, mm -hmm. that's valuable. And through that, you do improve the world. Mm -hmm. um, except in certain circumstances under particular conditions with a dynamic of the right, a single person or a small group of people are not going to save the world or make a giant change. Mm -hmm. That's not to say it doesn't happen. It's just, uh, you, that's, that's not something that you can plan to make right, happen. Right, right, it's, it's, it's one of those things where anything in life is the intersection of preparation and opportunity. You know, that person who wanted to change the world, the ones who actually made, did something that made big changes mm -hmm. in the world, they didn't do it just because they decided they were going to and did it. Right. An opportunity yeah, they were for that to work for it and, crossed yeah. paths with them, and because they were right. prepared, they were able to do it. Right. But for every person that did that, there's a million people that mm -hmm. that never did. I'm probably one of those million one of those million people. Um, so, can we bring peace and pos prosperity to the entire world through through the you know teaching people good political mm -hmm. governing philosophies? Probably not. Can you change the world for hundreds, maybe thousands of people right. in your in your own general area around you that have needs? That you can right. do. Right. That you can do, and and it doesn't require nearly the perfect intersection of an opportunity with with right. your work. You literally can just go help them. Right. As long as they're willing yeah. to accept it. Yeah. That's that's all it takes to, to right. make the world better in that one spot at that one piece of time with right. that with that particular right. person. Well, and I think the only I agree with a hundred percent of that. I think the only thing I would add is that I am still hopeful that you can get enough young people to understand some of these concepts that we talked about today and to mitigate some of the damage that's caused before sure. they become and, totally baked into and, it. Because I think once they, and I, I dealt with this at Allstate, you train people and they would go, oh, that's the greatest training I've ever done. And then they, behavioral training, and then they would go out and they'd be exactly the same person two days later. That's Adults the, are hard to change and yep. they have to want to change themselves. They don't, they don't take external stimuli and then change. I think you still have an opportunity with young people. And that's that's the that's that's, that's mostly that's the only opportunity you have. Yeah, um, grown yeah, ups, enough. grown ups are the ones with the authority and power to 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 actually take action and make things happen. But they're basing that on on what they have come to yeah, believe. Yeah, the flawed to that premises, point. Of and the, that's something that, you have right. to deal with 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 right. with children. Um, the really the only hope we have of writing this um, is going to be a focus on on instilling instilling proper foundational principles and yeah, values through the education system or in whatever, chil yes. and children yes. so that they grow into adults that are grounded in the, in the understanding that they own themselves they're not owned by other people that they right. have rights and and uh, and bad people don't get to take them away just because right. they think it's for a good re if if, right. if they grow up understanding that and and believing in it they will the decisions that they make socio-politically governmentally whatever it is will will well, geared towards that direction. So, right. you know, trying to re-educate adults, just like you said, a few yeah. of them will get it. They'll go, oh, so there are some adults who learn yeah. new stuff and yeah. they take it and it, yeah. it becomes something. But that's not where the largest number of people who can be reached are. Right. It's it's, it's children. So it's no mystery that, that the people that wanted to really convert us more heavily from from a free society to a socialistic one, that's what they did. They sure, took control of sure. the education yeah, they, system. Yeah. And they said they were going to do it. It's not like a right. conspiracy theory. Right. They got together, had giant meetings, you know, right. wrote treaties and, and sent them around, wrote books about it. That's what they said they right. were going to do. They told us. Right. And then they did it. And here right. we are. Right. Um, well, we're still we're still dealing with the problems of that because one of the problems with the with the education system early on was they were trying to train people to be on on assembly lines that were they were doing one thing and that was all that they do we still do that today that's why we're behind in a lot of the problems that you know we don't have enough engineers we don't have enough people who understand math and you know because we were we're we're teaching people a certain way and we're teaching them all the same and we haven't started looking into the future and the information age just screwed us because it came so fast that we weren't ready for it you know so i think I think we've we set up a system that was created for a static culture, and our culture is so dynamic now. And that's, um, and that's, you know, just something. It that, wasn't even appropriate at the time. 
Well, um, the, the, the education, the, the modern government education is based on is based on John Dewey's right system. Right. And John Dewey's idea about education is is that you need to educate people to be an effective, productive part of a group. Right. Um, with limited capabilities to think for right, themselves. Right. They only need right. You only right. want to educate them to the point that they can be Do, a, a part a a right. a part of that group and be productive. Right. Because if you do any more. Then they're going to be free thinkers. And it's going they're to cause gonna be, problems. They're going to be Greg yeah. in high school. Mm -hmm. That you 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 want something that's not part of that yeah. system, and you're going to create pro problems sure. for all the authoritarians that were. Yep. If you do any less, they they're not a viable productive workforce. Right. Um, if if and if what you want is a top down socialized controlled system. Where where people have very little choice and are and are basically bossed around right. through most aspects of their lives. Well, John Dewey gave us the perfect yeah, educational system to do we that. We got it. Yep. Um, and here we are, 70, 80, 90 years yep. down the road from that. It, it it turned out exactly like he right. wanted it to. Um, but now it's now it's creating problems on the production side because before when we had when we had uh, manual labor type of jobs. Um, we had the people to do it. Now we don't have the people because there's not enough creativity in our system. There's not enough well, ingenuity and all that kind of stuff. For various reasons, we're telling kids to do other things. We're right. telling them to. We're telling them to, to to get degrees in Bavarian literature. Yeah, exactly. We're telling you know exactly. you know we're we're lying to them and saying just having the college degree is all that will matter. You'll be able to get all yep. kinds of jobs. You know, so if you want to if you want to study, um, uh, you know, some liberal art. Mm -hmm. Uh, women's studies in, or, in some yeah. particular point in time yeah. in history and make that the entire focus of a four-year college degree then then do it because just having the degree is enough well that turned out not to be the case there was a time when all other things being equal if you and four other people were trying to get a job and yeah. you know, all had oh, basically yeah. the same capabilities yeah. you were the one with a college degree yeah. you got it because of that i knew exactly when it was those here days in Roanoke. Are, those days are gone yep those days, because now, now if you're everybody applying for a job at, at Starbucks, probably yep. at least has some college, and many of them have college yep. degrees. Some of them have master's yep. degrees. Well, um, in, in 1985, we were looking for four-year degrees. Uh, well, we could find them anywhere, but very few of the people wanted to go into management. About three or four years after that, everybody who came to work because the because we had a, a little bit of a recession in there. Everybody who came in had a four-year degree, but they were looking for data entry jobs because those were the only jobs we had available. Mm -hmm. So we had we had way overqualified people, and you knew darn well that they were going to get dissatisfied because they were looking for something more because somebody told them the four-year degree was worth X, and we were only going to pay them X minus you mm -hmm. know well, fifteen thousand dollars. This in and of itself is is a very huge topic. With a lot of thing, mm -hmm. in, a lot going in on that you could do whole yeah. shows like this just just on that. Um, but the grand overview is that, like anything else, um, government intervention in that system allowed people to use that as a tool to manipulate things for their yes. own personal gain. Yes. So by getting government so involved in higher education, and that involvement led to involvement through financial means. Mm -hmm. Um, what you created was a system with easy money to get your hands on. So the schools, the the recruiters, the you know every yep. everybody was was able to use that to their own personal advantage, which was to get as many people to take out loans as possible to go to school, because that's more money for oh, the school. Yeah. It's oh, more yeah. money for me. Yeah. You know. And they, now they, we and now we complain about you know how many administrators there are in school. Well, mm -hmm. the reason was because we filled up the pot of gold. And people could just go. And they had to create. And they, yeah. If you give people the money yeah. to create a new job, whether they need that job yep. or not, they're going to create that job. Yeah, exactly. If that's what's required to keep getting that money, right. that's and that's that's not a that's not a free system. That's a manipulative system. Right. Um, and that's what that's what government intervention. Now, I mean, there's people. They're not. They're not. Te they're not telling kids to go to college. Because in their heart they know that that's no, more money for the college. They, yeah, think, they think they're they're, they're helping good things for, yeah. and it's because they are their sensibilities are being brought along in in a system based on faulty information, right. where what's generally accepted as true is actually wrong and is right. actually hurtful in the long run. But but nobody understands it that way because this is what's considered normal, correct, and right. this is what makes you a part of the right. group.
Right. So you 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 go you go right. with it. And so now we have we have uh, probably the largest population of highly educated people that can't and don't do anything with it. Well, and they're edu they're not educated for the jobs that we have. That's the problem. You know, they're educated in some generic. Some of them aren't know, educated for any job. Right. Exactly. What, how many jobs right. around the world are there? Honestly, for somebody whose whose study was was Shakespeare. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, you can go into theater. You can become a playwright. You right. know, you can use that. You can you can read Shakespeare as a study of human beings. That could be helpful in a lot of places. But but in real numbers, how many actual yeah. jobs can you find and go apply for where that is the thing you needed right. to get that job? Almost none. Right. Um, well, and 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 you know, we'll we'll we're we're gonna cut this off because. Marley needs to go out. <laughs> but thank you very much. I didn't know that all I had to do was ask you to come in and talk. I didn't realize that that was the... All I had to do was say, come on in and we'll talk. And then you and then you'd actually I'm, come. Yeah, I'm never going to want to. I well, just... I, my, why, why, but you should want to. Like Just like you're going to... You, I'm going to walk you out to your, your car and we're going to make sure you put your seatbelt on. Because um, you're too smart not to wear your seatbelt. Even though even though you don't like the fact there was that a there's a law for no seatbelts. There was, there, there was a time before, before I got to the end of my political days where I wanted to do this. And I wanted people to hear what I had to say. You don't want them to them. hear anymore. It's or not that don't I don't care. want it's not that I don't care. want them to. It's I don't care about that more than I care about other things. Yeah. And so you would rather have used this two hours or whatever we did doing something else? Well what I used it to do was was something for you. Well thank you. And that was, was and, and very nice. And that's And then we'll monetize this, we'll make some money and people that, will comment and then all of a sudden they'll say, I want to see Greg. Greg Greg has got a He's got a whole bunch of stuff that I want to do. <laughs> well, and I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna post some things underneath here, but I'll tell you one of the things that that Greg dropped on me about a week and a half ago. He said the whole world of business and relationships is built on lies that we've we've grown to tell each other. Uh, so if that isn't the tease for the next time that we talk. It's kind of, so you're all lying to each other, and all we're going to try to do, or what I'm going to try to do, is is get you to understand that you're all lying to each other, and maybe maybe next week you won't lie to each other so much because lies. What did you say? Lies grease the wheels of. Yeah, somebody else told me this yeah. when I was complaining about all the lying around me. He said, "Well, lies are the are the are the grease that that makes society run smoothly." Right. And I understand that from a point of if somebody says introduces you to their newborn baby, and yeah, says, so this is isn't beautiful. it beautiful? No, it's it could the be the ugliest baby, baby in the world, but you can't. Right. Yeah, no you can't, good comes from yes, telling that truth. Right. That's right. that's a. I get that, right. but that's a little different than than general well, lies. Well, there's there's, there's you know. white lies, and then there's bigger lies, and we've gotten to the point where we're lying to each other just for some reason that that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. But that's I would tell because because lies, even those kinds, just like uh, they they grate me wrong. I tend to answer those questions in a way that. Implies, <laughs> implies I agree, but doesn't say I agree because I don't want a lot of people even about that. So my answer right. to that would be: There's no other baby on the in the world like them, and that's yes. sad, and that satisfies no, them. They yes. think you're agreeing with them, yes, yes, and and right. so you don't have conflict because right. I don't I don't want to have conflict. Right. I don't want to have conflict.